you're looking at the in-between space where individual interactions can build social structure. And I think it's a network, network analysis can be yeah, a powerful tool for studying law because in law we're not necessarily interested in individual cases or individual statutes, nor are we always interested in the legal system as a whole, but in interactions between laws, interactions between courts, interactions between lawyers. And so some basics on network analysis. In the network, there are two things, basically, actors and ties. Actors, um, also called nodes and vertices, and the more uh, technical language. These can be anything. These can be people, individuals, they can be organizations, courts, uh, states. Uh, they can be things, too, like documents. Uh, if you've ever wondered why Netflix keeps recommending different movies to you, they put those movies in a network, and that's how they uh, generate the recommendations for you. And uh, the second part of that is ties. And ties can be any sort of meaningful connection between two actors, right? And uh, individual networks, those are friends. This can be working relationships. It can be exchange relationships. Um, and if we're talking about documents or anything like that, it can be citations too, right? So you can start to see how might, this might uh, be useful in applying it to the legal world. And the network itself is just all the actors and the ties and the population that you're looking at and uh, put together and represented as a graph. And the, um, with network analysis in the legal world, you can do you know, several things. Um, first of all, you can represent, these, uh, visually represent these relationships. And in order to show you how to do that, I'm gonna use a very simple network of uh, state bar memberships. Um, now, some states, California most obviously, don't allow uh, out-of-state lawyers to practice there. You have to pass the bar. Other states, like Illinois, which I just learned, allow anybody to uh, wave in and practice law in Illinois. Other, other states take it on a case-by-case -case basis. And what you can do is you can put all that in a giant matrix, or you can represent it as a network. Uh, the red uh, arrows between uh, states are one-way relationships. You can, you can move from California to Illinois, but not back. The green uh, arrows represent reciprocal relationships, so Iowa and Mississippi can move back and forth. And so you can see how a lawyer in their career can move from California to uh, Minnesota uh, and to Pennsylvania, but not back. Um, and the, the actors in the networks are grouped roughly by any sort of relationships that they have with the other actors in the network. Now beyond just mere visual representation, you can also use networks analyze structures of the network and learn something about the group you're studying. Now for me, uh, I, I study, I, I, I look at the legal profession and one of the things I'm interested in is the organizational structure of law firms, right? Are law firms themselves, uh, are they really integrated organizations where everybody works with everybody else, right? Really collegial organizations? Or are they sort of like balkanized, more like fiefdoms where everybody just is, is bound together by a brand name? So what I did was I, I took uh, press releases from a, a major, uh, large law firm. And I looked and, and saw what attorneys work with what other attorneys on these matters. And if an attorney, if attorney A worked with attorney B, they got a tie. And using that, I was able to build this network. The important thing to note about this network is uh, I color-coded the various attorneys. The ones in black are generalists, they're corporate generalists. The ones in different colors, those ones are specialists. Right, so orange is IP, green is tax, et cetera, et cetera. And to answer the sort of question about whether or not this is integrated network or this is a sort of, you know, a, you know, a lot of clicks, the answer is kind of both. What you see is an integrated core comprised mostly of specialists that work with attorneys across the firm. But on the periphery, for the most part, those are the corporate lawyers in groups of three or four they share, the, those are corporate lawyers that generally have one client and they work with exclusively each other on that client, but what binds them to the firm and ultimately creates a firm is their ties to these specialists uh, in the rest of uh, the firm. Final thing you can do is you can use network analysis to understand the factors that influence tie formation, that influence how a network is built. For this one, I'm going to use a larger network, uh, and larger networks are kind of hard to visualize because there are a lot of actors, there are a lot of ties, so it ends up looking a little bit like a blur, but hopefully this will come across. This is every uh, district court judge in the United States, federal district court judge in the United States, put on a network uh, where the ties are citations between them. 
And as you can see, there's sort of a power law thing going in here. There's a lot, like a few judges in the center who are cited by almost everybody, and then there's judges on the periphery who are cited by almost nobody. And um, they're, you know, the nodes are, are, are size of the nodes are a function of how often they're cited. But beyond simply just looking at this, we can try to examine what are the factors that influence what, what, uh, that make a judge more likely to cite another judge. One of those is geography, right? Judges that are <laughs> judges that are closer to one another tend to cite uh, those judges. Reciprocity, right? If, you, if Judge A cites Judge B, Judge B is more likely to cite Judge A. And transitivity, right? which is uh, if you, Judge A cites Judge B, B cites C, C is more likely to cite A. So you see a social structure uh, evolving in this uh, network of judges. Finally, the, the, uh, the thing that is less uh, uh, predictable is that there was no actual effect of party. The, uh, the, uh, if there was, you'd see a big blue, uh, blue section and a big red section. But it turns out that party of the party uh, uh, that, that appointed the judge doesn't actually have very much influence on uh, whether or not the judges cite one another, at least at this level. Anyway, so those are a couple of examples of how network analysis can be used to understand, better understand the legal world. Thank you.